Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. Let's just get started here, because we do have a few replays, so... 34 minutes left. Weird stuff happening again this week. This week we're using our ultra jank layout. <laughs> if you thought the previous layout had, had things wrong with it, this one has so much more. Uh, and it just looks like it's basically the same thing, but a unit shifted, but it, it's awkward. Uh, of course, we have turn one Deadeye, but of course, Deadeye is uh, about as good as as much damage as you can do. So if you can't do any damage, well, you don't do anything. <laughs> uh, it's not... you're just kind of there for the spook factor, I guess. I guess in some sense it discourages people from trying to just hit and turn anywhere they want. It was kind of surprising to see what people did this week uh, because there's definitely some things that people shouldn't be doing but it's just they do it so. <laughs> of course the main issue is because we have deflect missile on Selif. It's non-trivial for Lin to pick up the one round KO. It is possible. I can actually do it myself. <laughs> you just need a lot of power. Um, that's really what it comes down to. But of course, Selif has a pretty large HP stat and two cooldown Ignis if you're not careful. So it's very dicey in that respect. But ideally, I would like Ignis to be at one cooldown for the immediate counter because not every unit, you know, immediately doubles Selif. And if they have like no follow up or some follow up denial, you can't proc Ignis, so that's kind of a problem. I guess in the most ideal scenario, we would have. Um, we would have Z fully charged Ignis, but that's just too ridiculous. <laughs> when you have 67 HP, I, I don't think that's happening. But here, Dorothea that goes ahead and attacks here. They get the glimmer off here, but it's not enough damage to take out Selif here. And so they just have to leave Sigurd here to get murdered by Selif. Theoretically, you know, if they had Nilla in range, maybe they would have. I don't think there was any way for them to cleanly one round KO without some antics. So because of that, we get to pick up a kill here with Ignis. And well, he's in vantage range as well, I think. And they just end up surrendering here. Probably because they can definitely afford to not... They can get a better match, is the point. And here we have quite a few mages with Freya, which is quite interesting. Don't see this too often, just a lot of ranged units. These, of course, my team is predominantly ranged units, so naturally it would just make sense to do stuff like this. But they decide to hit end turn like this, and I don't know about you, but there's panic manner, there's sudden panic. Uh, <laughs> not the most ideal layout, and like Julia, for example, is adjacent to Sonya, so. Probably not the greatest idea, but because of all those debuffs, Bramamon can, this, again, the plus zero Bramamon doing quite a bit of damage here, and uh, not able to kill, of course, because not enough attack out of 10, but Robin's weakened enough so that self manages to kill <laughs> By doing 8 damage, 10 out of 10. And Shinon gets to do basically nothing because he's always adjacent to someone after. <laughs> he's almost always adjacent to someone. But I'm guessing here their problem was they wanted to like take out Selif. Um, I mean, they can definitely. I'm pretty sure they can take out Shinon in one shot. I'd be surprised if they couldn't, but uh, probably can't one round KO Selif. Uh, he also gets the counterattack of Ignis, so that's a small problem, but uh, moving on. 
And of course, naturally early in the season, we just get Dancer Fest. Uh, it looks standard, pretty standard thing for light season nowadays. Because other than this like super stall teams or the giga aggressive turn one setups, you can usually get away with like the quote unquote PVE strategy where all you do is I just realized I didn't have duo, the duo animations enabled. I had them disabled because I was, because of Tempest Trials, and I was using Dual Lin for a bit to get some HM on her, but uh, I guess we'll have to fix that for the uh, next episode because I'm too lazy to change it for this current episode. So I decided to activate the Bolt Trap since they know it's real, and it sets up Wings of Mercy range. Now they're all ready to go. They decide to go healing tower it up but it maintains sort of wings of mercy range but a uh, dual in only doing 18 base damage to bramamon is kind of surprising i guess there's a uh, sudden panic so there's that but yep it's just the usual shenanigans of people going in with dual in and uh it's not like any of my units actually have a competent enough bulk to deal with it. Just, again, the main thing is she gets the proc as special if you're not running like special fighter or guard or whatnot. That's just the main problem. Because otherwise, you know, you can definitely survive, unless it's the ultra max invested ones with like dual P and E. Mul like multi dual P and E buffing or we're Shenanigans where you just get her attack to like the 90s and stuff and at that point it's very hard To even to survive without using deflect missile. That's just how it is Selif being Selif. Well, he's naturally going to miss the kill because it's Selif And they have hardy bearing on duo Sigurd presumably because vantage can be a problem because if uh <laughs> But of course, they also had Festival Micaiah for more Hardy Bearing, as if you didn't need more. <laughs> uh, as if you d didn't need any. Um, yeah, double the Hardy Bearing, so. Just a clean win. Nothing too mind blowing there. And well, this is just a case of done goof. Um, Triple specials activated turn one's pretty cool. Ouch, patch ruptured sky. That's very nice for air for the uh, damage output because one of her problems is never having enough attack, especially for nowadays. But as you'll see, things are on kind of a ticking timer. They decide to just spend some time getting set up. Not sure why they didn't break the ether structure there. Uh, I guess they're retaining space in some sense. I guess they're checking damage there, maybe trying to go after Sheenon. Maybe couldn't quite do it there. As you can see, something happened. Air uh, lost her special because Nils has even pulse ties. So now, after turn four, Sigurd has, lose, has lost, has lose, <laughs> has lost his special. Like, it's such a meme skill that I just have on Nils because he comes with it, but in occasions like this, it comes in handy because Sigurd is unable to proc his special, which means none of his allies are able to get the extra movement, and so they're just kind of stuck here. And if you uh, remember, this is one of... Uh, fellow peoples who when we when we try hard during light season they're they're usually above us <laughs> very typically uh, I think they just have stronger scoring in general and obviously have more competent offense teams but this is mostly just a planning goof um, kind of just took too long to set up and go in because of course they also have near trace so if you do some really clever things, you can get quite a bit of runaway value from Near Trace, and uh, there's not really much my team can do at this point, because then it would just be dance, dance, dance. So like, the, the main scary part would be Selif moving twice, maybe, but yeah. 
And here we go again. More maxed out shenanigans. What's new? But uh, not too heavy merges there, but a plus 10 peony. That's something I want to do eventually. Plus 10, plus 10. So it's just decked out scoring. Um, and of course, Mila in the extra slot. So the score doesn't get affected. But yeah, it's just a very strong Fae and mobility combination. So it's just a matter of can you tank? And that, that's always that's always like the most relevant question in the book. Can you tank? And they decide to take out Bramon here, which is uh, naturally pretty reasonable. And they decide to plop Faye here. Now, of course, Faye is uh, pretty bulky to say the least. So naturally against Deadeye, well, if you don't do a lot of damage with Deadeye, you kind of don't do a lot of damage. <laughs> so Faye's just going to easily pick up the one round KO. But of course, if you haven't figured it out already, the problem is, well, uh, Seleph is not a ranged unit, so it's just free real estate for Seleph to pick up the kill on Layla, and that's a Ripperonis. And for that reason, they decide to take out Seleph here. Counters back with Ignis, but like usual, Seleph misses the kill. <laughs> Pretty normal. And they decide to hit and turn again. But this time around, it's Sylvia against Freya. But Sylvia has too much HP for Freya. So you guessed it, she uh, can't quite kill, which means Bramamon gets to go to town. And Luna does quite a bit of damage when you have a lot of HP. And this is. Not enough for Bramon to pick up the kill, but it was pretty close. <laughs> uh, if Fey didn't have that noon time, it would have been a rigged exact lethal, but uh, that's how it goes. And at this point, they just decide to go ahead and pick up the kill on Sylvia. But I don't actually remember if they, uh, take this match or if they surrender but they can definitely win at this point but I guess they just go ahead and surrender here again this is one of the people who if you were watching the leaderboards early on they were pretty high up there this was just another planning goof because you know if Seleph attacked into like Faye he was going to do like nothing <laughs> so it was mostly an the issue of Seleph not being a ranged unit. So far, save can activate. But at the end of the day, we all make our goofs sometimes. That's why Escape Ladder is very commonly used in Ether Raids. Pretty much everyone uses it, except for like people like me <laughs> who do it for the challenge or for the people who just do not have enough resources to actually even build it. But they decide to hit end turn here with Fallen with Leon, not Fallen Leon, because of course TA Raventoe naturally is going to do pretty well against the normal shenanigans. I mean, if you're if you're not doing well with TA and the the enemy unit isn't running Cancel Affinity, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, the whole point of TA is to uh, kind of make that matchup favorable, but here Dagger is unable to pick up the kill on Sola. And now he has Vantage Ignis ready to go. And unfortunately, their Fallen... Their, I keep saying Fallen Leon. Their Leon's kind of just stuck here, unfortunately for them. They're able to use like Gentle Dream in a way to teleport Leon out. That would have worked. But that didn't happen, and now it's... Uh, Seleph against Leon, and well, that's that's not going to end very well. And of course, Seleph is just going to ting into Travant because he kind of has a sizable defense stat. I mean, like in position right now, 
There's also Distant Guard. So even though he's deep, he's, it looks like he's debuffed, but Guilt Fork neutralizes the defense penalty. So he has like 62, 66, 71, 76, 80, 82 defense. No big deal. <laughs> So obviously, well, on top of the fact Shinon's going to not attack a decent anyone. Yeah, you don't even need IO shield there because you just have a massive defense stat. And you can see that 41 damage bonfire hurts quite a bit. And you can imagine what would happen if that was Ignis. Incredibly few units would be able to survive that. You would need like miracle or damage reduction and stuff. But at this point, Brownmond can now pick up the kill on Trevant. And uh, quite a big overkill, of course, because he doesn't have the greatest res stat there in that particular build. But the match is over at this point, because of course Dagger can clean up stuff. At some point, if we do get Dagger like from a free summon or something, I think I'll try light offense using her on the usual meme team. But the problem is you're using a six slot. So when you you face teams that like have lines or whatnot where you're short on space, it's not the greatest idea. And when I have one team, <laughs> it's not the greatest thing in the world. But it, I guess it would help out in a lot of ways. So I guess it would be okay. And, well, uh, nothing shouldn't be much of a surprise here. It's just double armors, dual lin for sniping down some units. And, of course, it's double save skills, all maxed out. Good old shenanigans. And, of course, it's not trivial. Like, you can't do necessarily anything with this team and beat my defense, but... It shouldn't be too hard to win cleanly. It's just that if you do things wrong, uh, things can go terribly wrong. But uh, of course, Bramon's not going to do too much to Henriette, except for Luna, because it's Luna. Henriette has quite a bit of bulk there, as you can see. If uh, Luna's doing that much damage, and Bramon gets to do one extra damage, <laughs> totally is going to matter. And with Iceberg, she's able to pick up the kill. There's always this weird balance with using Henriette, whether you want to use a healing special, or if you want to use a damage special, because one of her frequent problems, being a save unit, is missing the kills. And Iceberg definitely helps out with that. Of course, there's things like Sturdy Impact or Null Follow-Up or whatever that can make things slightly challenging. But of course, self against Hector, that's never going to end well. The only thing that could be interesting is if I was still running Tearfing on Seldoth, but uh, yeah, not really going to change much there. And now they're not going to risk Bramamon murdering anyone, so they just go in with Duel Lin and just pick up kills, irrelevant kills at least. Got the exact one shot on Bramlon there. And of course, there's no way that Mills is actually going to ever survive anything here, so GG's. And well, it's been a while, but it's, it's something that should be, I, I feel like should be more common. People using a uh, Altina against my defense because uh, <laughs> Like Bramamon is really the only thing I could possibly do any damage and he's not going to one-shot anytime soon Like doing 71 damage is very hard it, that, That's like the equivalent of doing like tournament places legendary Julia kind of damage You need a lot of damage if you want a one-shot but speaking of Legendary Julia, I feel like the Glacies thing is... I definitely like using Glacies, but I wanted to try out using AoE, an AoE special on her. Just like toss life and death on her or something. 
Or maybe if I really want to put Fury on her so she doesn't drop her bulk, but I don't really care too much. <laughs> I think we're running life and death on her. Just like double life and death. Actually, no, I can't do that. Because I need four charges. Darn. Which means it's going to be suboptimal. <laughs> But I just want to see how an AoE special would do for the memes. Because conceptually, Legendary Julia does have a pretty decent attack stat at base. And like, even if you look at maxed out Brave Hectors or whatever, they'll still only have like, you know, if, I don't know, 50 visible res tops. And if there's like debuffs or whatnot, AoE specials do not care about your penalty neutralization during combat, because it's all before combat. So, if Legendary Julia has like visible attacks out of like 80, you know, that AoE special is going to do a lot of damage. And because she has a high attack stat, you know, chances are she might be able to pick up the kill. Unless, of course, there's Vantage, by which case, well, <laughs> yeah, it's not really gonna matter. But, uh, just a very clean, clear, nothing mind blowing here. <laughs> My team just has nothing for this. Or just any competent damage dealer slash tank in general. Gotta move through things a little more quickly here because I realize you're taking a bit too much time. But good old Elwood can't tap for some reason. Just low merge units for the most part, except for the Elwood. Uh, kind of an interesting choice to use. I guess it makes sense if the enemy counters, then proccing Gale Force in one round is reasonable. But yeah, at base, if you're just going to attack twice, you're not going to uh, do too well. Like, all right, so of course Hector's going to take out Bramlon. Bramlon's not going to go out without doing quite a bit of damage, of course. And because Hector is proccing Isha on the second hit, he heals basically nothing. Like you can see, for example, this Hector, of course, it's not a plus 10 Hector, but you can see his visible res is not amazing. So theoretically, if we were to run like an AoE special Legendary Julia, that would be pretty devastating. And it would help her in matchups where there's like damage reduction of flame or whatnot because you essentially get to attack twice in some sense. But they go ahead and take out Sheena with Dagger. And well, she's kind of stuck there, so they just hit end turn. So naturally, Bramlon's going to go after her. And do a bit of damage here, of course. The problem is Dagger's actual bulk is not amazingly high, so there are instances, you know, where Luna might actually just miss the kill. But they can take out Nils here, and well, Bramon's still looming around. Just kind of doing his thing. Of course, Sylvia is isolated. But it's important to note, she is out of range of uh, Healing Tower. So Wings of Mercy technically was a thing, but not really because Bramon moves first. And unfortunately for my second Bramond, he's uh, unable to pick up the kill because you can never have too much attack. And well, Sylvia just obviously going to ting into Hector here. And that's the uh, Ripperonis for us. Alright, this team here. Guinevere and company. Pretty straightforward. Not too many merges. But, uh,. It can work, it's just you have to execute very well because this team does not have a lot of bulk against, say, against lots of attacks coming in. So they decide to hit end turn with Guinevere, and then they put Dagger next to Guinevere, which means she gets panicked. Not a, not a great idea. Um, and, uh, of course, it doesn't matter because her res is pretty decent, so... And, of course, she has effective damage against Tome units, but she still takes quite a bit of damage from Luna. So she is super weak right now. 
And the Celeth here, well, naturally is not going to pick up the kill because it's Celeth. But he does survive, which means Wings of Mercy comes to town. And so Bramon goes after Air because he can kill both Dagger and Air, but Air has more HP at the moment, so Ripperonis. And Shinon gets to attack Dagger and barely picks up the kill here with Deadeye. Again, he's not a Jace, he's adjacent to an ally. It's just he's not very good on this particular layout because of that. But here comes the Bolt Tower chip damage. We take out Bramon pretty cleanly with Versa. But of course, Seleph has his good old Vantage Ignis meme. <laughs> so they have to deal with that somehow, and uh, it's a bit questionable how they're going to do that, other than, of course, using a Versa. But they hit Entern with. like that, and well, unfortunately for them. Self actually just straight up one shots the Versa there with Ignis, so that's just a rip. At least he's no longer has Ignis, but he still does quite a bit of damage to Freya, and Freya almost does zero damage, so uh, hmm. But yep, yeah, this uh, layout's definitely meme. I, I, I definitely do. I might. If I'm really trying to meme though, I put an AoE special on Bramamon and I put an AoE special on Legendary Julia when it's Earth Season. And on top of that, I don't run Harvey Baron. <laughs> Just to see how many times they get rolled by Vantage uh, for the memes. Because why the heck not? Last but not least, there's uh, six minutes left in the season or so, so let's get going here because uh, we still gotta. Show our results for this week. Spoilers in uh, Arena Assault this week. We just got really unlucky. The matchmaker just would not give us matches, high enough scoring matches. But of course, it's our weakest season. It is Wind and Fire, and Legendary Sigurd did just come out, so it's natural for the cutoffs to increase by a bit. So unfortunately, we don't make top 1k, but it's not the end of the world. But here is like the perfect example of Deflect Missile in a nutshell. Yulin, of course, unable to kill here, and she's running Wind Sweep, so she doesn't get countered with by Ignis, but as a result, she can't uh, quad Seleth, but she still misses the kill. Um, unfortunately for them, because it just happened to be that way. So they get to use their duo skill and they're using Blazing Wind, which is actually a very interesting tech that definitely can work. I just find it a little interesting. That kind of places a lot of assumptions on the enemy team. But here, Brave Edelgard swapping in. Bramlon's going to attack into Brave Edelgard, and of course, her number one problem is she does not reduce any damage of the initial hit, so she just takes a lot of damage. And Noontime does not heal a lot. And because of far save, she has to take the hit. And, uh, well, again, the same problem as the first hit. She can't reduce any damage, so... Ripperoni's there. Now Bramon can go on his little mini rampage and pick up the kill on Duo Peony. And well, this matches Ripperonis at this point. They can still win, of course, but it's probably not the greatest idea in the world. But of course, it's the end of the season, so... You don't have very many options. Kind of a might as well thing. But like there, Lin's only doing 18 times 2 to a Bramamon of all units. So it's definitely suspicious, but here of course, Shinon's going to move first. But he moves in an awkward way because of the way the AI works. So, we don't get to snipe down anyone else, and they can just clean up the rest of the match here. We decided to hit end turn with Milla there, of course Nils is never killing Milla. Even if there's sudden panic, 
because uh, there's like no attack investment into our dancers. There's some attack investment in the form of like merges and not really flowers. We don't have too many flowers on them, but uh, yeah. We're going. So I accidentally hit <laughs> stop recording. Uh, awkwardly trying to speed through the replay, but you didn't miss much. We're not going to re-record that because we have two minutes left in the season. Um, yeah. Didn't do too great on defense, of course. But uh, going over here, resonant battles, we've already seen this. We're dropping arena. Um, we don't need 3,800 to go up this time around. Not too much in terms of defense matches, but we did get some. And of course, arena assaults a bit outside of top 1k. Not the end of the world. But yeah, we looks like we're going to barely make top 6k here. But yeah, we will be back when the results drop in. I had to be, I have to remember to be a bit quicker next time because, uh, <laughs> Almost ran out of time there. All right, after that goofball of a <laughs> of a end of the replays there, uh, top six K will take it. Not the end of the world. Of course, we would have liked to stay because this season we also have a chance to stay. It is Panic Manor bonus, so we get to bring back our good old friend. Panic Manor level 8. And as for the actual layout, not sure yet. Maybe we do something... Something completely different. Probably not, because I just don't have the time. But Saros bonus is going to murder us. Gunthro bonus is going to murder us. Lots of stuff's going to murder us. Uh, not going to be great. At least it's Earth season, so we can goofball a bit. And hopefully win some matches. <laughs> uh, we're just trying to get back into Vault of Heaven, of course. It doesn't really matter how high we rank, because we can't ever break top 10k. So, back to tier 21. I don't know if we can stay. I'm inclined to think no. <laughs> So, yeah, and unfortunately, we don't make top 1k this time around in Arena Assault, but it's not the end of the world. We do lose some feathers, and as you can see, we are lacking in feathers. I'm not joking. <laughs> this looks like a lot of feathers, but that's because I haven't built all the units I want to build yet. Like, even if I just wanted to 5-star all my, like, promote all my 4-star healers to 5-stars, there's there's a good chunk of them here. Like, that's at least, I don't know, 200k feathers already, probably more. And that's just the healers, you know? There's, there's kind of other units, like Raven, that still needs to get to plus 10 and whatnot, so... It's going to be a while, but well, that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Eth Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye.